Cities in developing regions then will become the dominant form of global human settlement in the coming decades, basically the remainder of our careers, and slums will be the dominant form of glo global housing design during that time. And you probably won't see this slum housing in the magazines like Better Homes and Gardens or Architectural Digest. But such housing will, will be a pervasive feature of the global built environment. The location, scale, and potential impacts associated with the great rise of cities constitute nothing less than a call to action for the humanitarian community and others to place greater emphasis on new and innovative forms of responding to urban-based disasters and developing effective DRR programming so that harm's way, that much used term, harm's way, can be identified and managed more effectively over time. And again, do's and don'ts. I took it to heart. Do think context, context, context. The humanitarian community's equivalent to the real estate industry's mantra of location, location, location. Local resources, institutions, expertise, and wisdom exist even in severely damaged human settlements and should help form the basis for understanding the capacities, resources, opportunities, and disaster impacts that will guide response and recovery efforts. On the flip side, don't get caught up in embracing the deployment approach. In stark contrast to con context, by adopting the all-too-easy assumption, fueled in part by media reports, rampant media reports, that everything in the disaster-affected area has been destroyed, we therefore must provide everything, no matter how expensive, at the earliest possible time. The <laughs> deployment approach has the effect of pushing often highly inappropriate resources into disaster areas. Instead of responding to pull requests for resources based on on-the-ground assessment of needs, 